slides? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. then can you do it or you need more permissions? I need more permissions. I'm making you co-host now. Okay, so and Bridget, you can speak now as well. Hi everyone. This is Bridget Magoba from Uganda, but based in Sierra Leone. Um, myself and Bamoy are implementing um, case-based disease surveillance and uh, weekly reporting in Sierra Leone. So Bamoy is going to take us through um, the different um, the different approaches we are using and what we've gone through and what we've achieved so far. Um, I'm currently working with Affinet and supporting the Directorate of Health, Security and Emergencies. Over to you, Bamoy. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody and everywhere where you are. I am Mohamed Bamoy Kamara. I am from Sierra Leone and I was born in Sierra Leone and I grew up in Sierra Leone. I'm currently working for the DHSC, that is the Directorate of Health Security and Emergency. And I'm also a uh, support staff in the implementation of ECBS EIDSR. And I'm working. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Sorry. Um, currently, uh, we've implemented uh, the aggregated and the tracker, and the tracker for um, DHIS2. For the aggregated, we've no. implemented the monthly, monthly HMIS reporting and also the weekly disease reporting. And also, we've also implemented the um, COVID 19 bed occupancy. And for the tracker program, we've implemented, we've partly implemented the case base because uh, not all the districts have been affected by this project. And also we are using uh, the COVID response, case base are for the COVID response. And uh, we've implemented the contact tracing COVID-19 uh, program, the quarantine monitoring program, and the passenger locator form. Sorry, Bamoy, we can't see the next slide. We still see the, the, the header slide. The header slide, okay. Implemented both the aggregate and the tracker um, components of DHIS2 in Sierra Leone. So for the aggregates, we've implemented the monthly HMIS reporting and uh, the weekly disease reporting, the COVID-19 bed occupancy. And uh, for the tracker programs, we've implemented the case-based disease partly because not all the districts have been affected. We are still struggling on having funds for implementing the other regions. Also, we've implemented the contact tracing for the COVID-19 response, the quarantine monitoring and the passenger locator form. Um, for the annual implementation, so for the weekly uh, reporting, what we did we first did a, a national TOT, that is a national training of trainers, because of uh, the number of staff and the number of people involved in the project, we had to do a national TOT for the district and facility. And for the Android capture, we uh, actually implemented the Android capture app. But uh, for the IDSR, we are currently using a custom app developed by EL Africa. And uh, I was working at EL Africa. I was not part of the development team, but I was part of the uh, deployment and implementation team. So we have rolled out the IDSR to 1,300 health facility. We've also distributed tablets to this 1,300 health facility. And also we implemented and we distributed MDM in all of these uh, tablets and uh, facility. But due to funding, we've actually stopped the MDM subscription has expired, so we are crippled with funding now. So for the case-based surveillance reporting, what we did, uh, we started with uh, four districts. We piloted the project in four districts. After then we move, we, ex we escalate the project to eight districts. So it has left another eight districts. So far, 800 health facilities have been affected by the case-based. And we are using the Android uh, uh, data capture app developed by Oslo to implement this project. But we are having challenges with uh, internet submissions and 
SMS submission because in order for you to use uh, uh, an app in Sierra Leone, you need the gateway. So we are still struggling on getting the gateway in order for us to configure the SMS channel. So far, our achievement so far, 16 out of 16 districts have been using Android tablets, Android devices, and they've been reporting the IDSR. And also we've uh, actually um, achieved the completeness and timeliness of the WHO limit. And uh, 12 out of 16 districts, that is over 800 health facilities have been trained on case-based reporting of 20 priority diseases. 16 of 16 districts are currently using the case base. That is, they are using the web platform in order to report uh, positive and suspected cases of COVID-19, including contact. And also um, this case base uh, uh, project has been actually affected by the national, that is the Ministry of Health is fully involved all other health partners are fully involved. That is the WHO, the CDC, PIH, and all. And also, we've actually integrated a ComCare and Health Connect. These are third party applications that are integrated with DHIS. So they're all communicating with DHIS to now. And also, we are using the WhatsApp group, uh, WhatsApp channel, in order to communicate our technical issues and how we can solve them. So for the lessons plans, one, uh, the change of management in any electronic system implementation. So this is one of the, 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 the reason that cripple or, I mean, damage or, I mean, reduce the, the strength of any implementation systems in every area. So pilot testing in different terrains of the counties, we are used in order to assess the performance of the application and uh, users and stakeholder engage engagements during implementation because in order to implement a project successfully, you need to involve all stakeholders. That is all health-related stakeholders. That is the WHO, the CDC, Affinet, Ministry of Health, E-Health, and Focus 1000. And also, um, MDM promotes effectiveness and efficiency in mobile application implementation. So because of the MDM, Health facility staff, we are not able to misuse the device because it restricts them from accessing some other third party applications like YouTube, WhatsApp, and so on. But because of now we don't have MDM, um, some of these uh, tablets have been damaged, have been misused, and some health facilities are not reporting using the tablet. Some of them are using the hard copy. So, also, we the other lessons learned is uh, building capacity at lower level promotes the sustainability of any DHS to implementation. In order for you to be sustainable in DHS, to, you need to make sure you develop local capacity that is in our Sierra Leoneans, indigents. So some of our challenges, um, facilities that are in out to reach areas are struggling with connectivity. You know, um, this part of the world, we are still struggling with connectivity not everywhere you can get network access. So for this reason, that's why we are trying and we are pushing very hard in order to get the SMS working. So inadequate funds for replacing damaged and faulty devices. Currently, um, almost 80% of the devices that have been developed are out of date. They are running on KitKat, that is Android 4.4. And the Oslo app, is, I mean, struggling in order for it to be installed in those tablets, you know? So there is need to replace those tablets and we are struggling with funding. On reliable power source in order to charge those tablets. So some for some villages, because of there is no electricity, the facility in charge has to have to, have to um, take, I mean, transport or in order to, in, he or she has to move from one point to the other in order to charge the tablets for it to be used. So they are faced with that challenge. So inadequate funds also in order for us to recruit HMIS officers in those districts that we are working on, you see? So we don't have focal person in those districts. Whenever there is an issue, we the national people have to go down there and it takes time for us to go down there. So there is need for us to get funding in order to 
I mean, get, or he could HMIS officer. Like I said again, uh, there is inadequate funds for MDM substitutions. Before, WHO was paying for MDM. So, why is he on the other? WHO decide, decided to transit the MDM substitution to the Ministry of Health, that is the government. And the government currently is crippled with uh, budget funding. So, for that reason, we are unable to get MDM substitution. So resistance by the laboratory to use the case-based application. So currently we are we are having challenge with the, the laboratory pillar. The laboratory pillar is a bit non-responsive in, in using the case base, but we are still in negotiation in order for them to use the case base to enter data. Mohammed, I need to remind you that uh, you are run out of time. So if you can Please uh, complete, yeah. but uh, remember that you need to finish. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Martha. So lack of in-country capacity to maintain custom app, because this custom app, it was developed by some developers, even though we have local developers, but these local developers are junior developers. They are not too experienced in customizing or maintaining this application. So that's why we are very happy the Oslo app is working fine and we are planning to transit to the Oslo app. So the way forward, one, like I said, we are planning to migrate to the Oslo generic app and also ensure the SMS functionality is working perfect. So also we are planning to build IT capacity at this state level in order to promote faster response to facility staff for their technical challenges. Deploy SMS, so SMS submission capture app for case-based disease surveillance reporting. So I think one of the challenges in also using the case base is submitting case-based data because it is a mix of uh, characters. That is, you are also submitting text and values via SMS. That is another challenge. So we need also the laboratory pillar to be friendly with us in order for them to use the case base. Deploy weekly and case-based electronic reporting in private and health, uh, private and faith-based health facilities. So some of the private and faith-based health facilities are not using the IDS app currently, but we are planning for us to roll out there. Mohammed, also, we sorry, you, you have one minute. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Sorry, because we are taking time from the other participants. It's really interesting, but... Uh... I know, I know. So again, we are planning to build national level capacity to DHIS2 and in-country backend trainings. Currently, we don't have no DHIS2, I mean, DHIS2 staff, DHIS2 officers that fully understand the configuration and how to maintain the system. So. We need capacity building. Thank you all. And I'm very, very happy to do this presentation. Thank you, Mata. Thank you. Yusuf Thank you too. very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We are going to have to uh, to move to the next presenter. We will see if we have time for questions later. Uh,